I will cover um, the new album from Mike Wise, but actually it is the first collaborative album between him and producer Right Track called The Unusual Suspects. And before that, just to kick things off, sure. uh, Ricardo, you you went to the Bars in Bars um, event, sure. which yep. uh, took place last right. Tuesday times recording here. Uh, yeah. It was in it was in Sando, so you know that that like real far for me, you know. But I really yeah, wanted to go on. not not just because it's free, but for me, like well, um, I, did, I just want to go. Sorry. It, it, I, well, I think it would be probably relatively easy to get to get to because it was in South Park, so you don't have to go Sando. Oh, uh, oh, it was in South. Okay, oh, oh shit. Okay, yeah. I didn't know it was in South Park. All right, all right, all right. But yeah, um, this 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 would have yeah. been you know opportunity for me to just see the best and brightest when it comes to local hip hop, right? And you know, um, I mean, right. it's, it's it's been true for you know just for a long period of time. It's kind of hard to just find a, a a venue or just like an actual event to just get local MCs doing their thing. And you know, it's just right. uh, so so glad that you know someone you know from the south basically coming and saying, yeah, this is it, bars and bars, right? Uh, yeah. What what I did instead, I I actually took in well actually, actually after the fact, sorry. Um, and it's funny that I bring this up to uh, versus right. Well, well, it was a sure. sort of a memorial day special, um, and you know it featured Eat Ball and MGG um, yeah. against um, what UGK. You versus UGK. But in this case, is of course Bun B because you know. Pimp C, rest in peace, um, Pimp C could be there for obvious reasons, right? But yeah, that was also repping the South as well, too, you know what I mean? And I couldn't yeah. help while I was watching that and thinking, wow, you know what I mean? Like, just how the, how the audience was gravitated to them and how they re- regarded as legends and whatnot. And everybody know all the lyrics and all that kind of stuff. That's how I kind of picture um, the local rap scene being, especially in the South, you know what I mean? So... That, that uh, you know, so so ramble aside, though, uh, Ricardo, take it away. You could just do your your run through, just your highlight, really, if right. you will, of bars and bars. So I did not stay for the entire thing. I missed setting the last performance because I made the mistake of um, getting my driver to come a little too early uh, for that. But ah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, but yeah, yeah, this was this was uh, pretty good. It was basically just harkening back. So yeah, this is pre-COVID. They they were doing the bars and bars semi regularly. Um, well, COVID shut down pretty much all of that, and yeah, this is like the first time we had, uh, you know, since since everything opened up, we had a little thing. They were supposed to have it last week, but it got postponed to this week. And uh, yeah, I I enjoyed myself. I you know, it's just I went out a while. I haven't gone out to something public like this, and I was like, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. So basically, what it was is uh, hosting Joe Black hosted it. Uh, uh, Mike Weiss, you know, just organized the whole thing. It's a lot more organized than before. Um, nice, everything nice. was almost on time it wasn't up completely on time but it was almost on time which is good enough it doesn't know any as bad as before they used to be but it was fine people come on time i think the only issue they had a, a technical person that they had to who didn't reach on time that was the problem but yeah uh, so basically what they did was they started off with um open mic uh just a bunch of people who was there who heard about it who were relative amateurs and they just came into this you know show of the talent uh the first person was an older gentleman by the name of slick who basically just send us back to the early nineties uh, dance hall, and this nice. dude just this dude just just did a, a really really simple solid performance uh, involving that. He was pretty good. Uh, the second person is a woman named Vanessa Soulful. She uh, I think she's from Shagonis, if I remember correctly. She was she did a couple performances. She was pretty good as well. Uh, she does it. Yeah, there's two two songs. Uh, again, just showing off her talent. She, uh, far, as far as I know, she hasn't done anything and yeah she she you know if she stick with it yeah i, I could see our future with her because she was actually quite good um the third was a, a young woman by the name of sam or well, i'm assuming young woman uh she uh did a spoken word performance uh this was pretty good um again all of these things were really quick in and out they, they didn't take more than five minutes in new the time they just you know very economical and then they did uh you know they did the thing as it is um, the first semi kind of known person, somebody I heard before, a uh, guy called Dennis 868 He did three songs. He was really good. One song he has is truly fantastic. And I really think this dude is, it's a, it's a TikTok song. Like it's, it's one of these songs that you could totally memeify. It's a track called Hungry to Dead. Uh, I thought this was absolutely hilarious. It's just this dude just talking about he belly. Just all the food, KFC, and just a, a really funny, funny bit track he just doing. And then he did another track. I forget the name of the song, but there's another track involving him. Uh, just like, you know, just, you know, tearing down this a woman who f- finds she hot now. And it's just, yeah. a, 
that's how just review a bunch of funny bits. Yeah, he's a comedy comedy rapper, but it's it's genuinely great great material as it is. Hungry, mm. Hungry Dead has a lot of potential. This is really fantastic. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I was about to say actually, I'm um, sorry to cut you there. Um, that yeah. I actually covered his mixtape um, last okay. year actually. Right. That track, okay. Funny Hungry Dead, was on it as well. To fun, okay. If I'm not mistaken, okay. you know. Okay, no problem. So, yeah, right. I mean, shout out to DNA man. You know, keep doing right. thing, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't hear this song before, so I, I was like, all right, cool. This is the thing. At least I don't remember hearing this song before. Uh, but yeah, that, that's uh, really well done. Uh, then you had uh, Quasar. I forget the track. Like, I don't know what I was doing during this time. I think I, I stepped out for and probably missed this part of his performance. But Quasar was, he did his thing. He came in and he, he was pretty good. Uh, oh, right. I think he was like a, a, like a pastor rapper, if I remember correctly. I think so. If I was, yeah, I should write down the details. But I just, I just added names in this. Then, um, when you, when you say was, pastor rapper, you mean you're like a Christian rapper or something? Well, yeah, kind of. I mean, it was okay. like, you see, it was like it, it just the shouted energy of like a, a local pastor, but rapping. And this was just oh, mixing, yeah, yeah, mixing rap and dancehall and, you know, kind of Christian evangelical stuff mixing. But yeah, they, they do that a lot of energy as uh, um, yeah, for yeah. it was. Then, uh, well, the first kind of, well, some semi large performance was Profess. Uh, Profess did, did a lot of his tracks, um, all of his big features involving Jelani, uh, G Smoke. Um, Polo and Rifa King, uh, the three of them just had um, you know, performances with Profess, they did their features, and it was great. Then Mike Wise came on, he did some of his, his classic tracks, he did um, oh gosh, uh, Run It Again, um, yeah. I, I, I saw he he put up a little clip on um, on social right. media, he was performing Build and Build, just right. the, well, you know, he wasn't really seeing the audience, but he was hearing the reaction though, like when yeah, he yeah, was yeah. just going into triplet yeah. flows though, it was like, all right, right. all right, all right, they really yeah, feel just, it though, you know. Yes, just, just brought he just brought the energy, you know, he brought the house down. People was you just amazing again, again, dude is an incredible talent, so yeah, no, 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 no surprise there. Uh, I did, um, I, I wish I personally wanted him to do um, the, the track with Raskas because you know there was an abba and the easy drinking song, but yeah, whatever. Uh, then Projectile came on, uh, he was pretty good. He did, he did his, okay. so he did uh, Run It Again, uh, mm-hmm. which is like this is like most popular song, Pong for Pong. I read, yeah, it's kind of a shame that he, he, should, he should get a video done, though, to be honest. Um, then, well, so this is when I, I just waited for this last performance and then I missed the final two, but he did, um, this is. J Smoke and Nettopod. There's uh, J Smoke and um, Jelani and his brother. They did a bunch of their, their usual classic songs, um, Splash Splash and all the, all the usual stuff. They did a lot of great songs. And then, uh, well, uh, Blackline, his brother, did his own song as well, uh, featuring J Smoke. And that's when I left. So I think the only person I miss, I forget who was before him, but I miss someone. And then Reefer King had the final performance, if I remember correctly. Okay. According, according to Mike Weiss. So he, right. uh, and yeah, yeah, Joe Black, Joe Black was great. He was just, um, you know, hyping up the audience, you mm-hmm. know, generally funny, you know, doing the little, you know, background vocal stuff when, when somebody needed it uh, to help them out. Yeah. And yeah, I just had a, a fun time all around. Uh, and I drink my stag, I, I enjoy myself. And yeah, it was just a, a fantastic uh, night all around for me. Um, I thought it was great. You know, I meet a bunch of old friends and yeah, we just, we just hook up and you know, we talk with shit and it was fine. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, great, great whole thing. I, I really hope they, they keep this on. I don't expect them to do it every week, but yeah, once a month is like, or once every two weeks, is it's a fight to me. Um, I mm. can make that and, and make the effort. Um, I thought I could make it every week, you know, if they do it every week, but you know, uh, right. once a month is fine. But yeah, this, this was excellent. Um, yeah. yeah. As, so so that's as, just a couple things, couple, right? Before I forget, right? Um, so so one, um, how was the, the audience reception to... Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it had a ton of energy. I mean, look, it's, it's still, it was still in, in, um, in South Park, still have a, a big crowd. People were surprised that, it, you know, I was actually surprised that as large a crowd as it did, but like it was a, a big, you know, reasonably popular night. Thursday night is reasonably bounced. It's not Friday night. But it's Thursday night, you know, they got Thursday night, so it's fine. And, and you know, they have a, a decent amount of energy. People came out for it. And, yeah, people was enjoying themselves. Right? It, was just, it was just vibes. It was just it was vibes. Yeah, and, um, and, and secondly, well, not, not so much a question, but that's more of a thought that I had in mind, right? And this is just based off of the verses I was watching. Um, you know, seeing guy, you seeing like Bun B, Eat Ball, MG, MGG, right? Who's yeah. rapping since the 90s, right? So I couldn't help but picture, you know, because, uh, you know, I don't want to make the, I don't want to make this so, so sort of like, um, okay, so when all they're old and all they get fat and things, or they could come on stage and perform and people could be singing, all they think it's a great to sit sing. But I just more like looking at it that's as a future, and like, you know, like Mike Wise, Profess, you know, Reefa King. Right. These MCs now, you know, 
10 years from now could actually show up on a stage, you know what I mean? Like, like a la Vusa, so something like that down here in China, well, yeah, right? Probably. And you have, like, you know, just a full audience just singing track after track, just knowing all the lyrics and whatnot. That's that's how I'm just seeing the future right now as far as, right. you know, local hip-hop man. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just glad that, you know, you have these enthusiastic um, individuals who just want to see, you know, um, this art form of, well, I don't want to say of ours, but just our version of, you know, hip-hop now, you know, right. just flourish and just continue on, you know what I mean? So, yeah, sh- again, shout out to Joe Black, shout out to Mike Wise, shout right. out to everybody who who showed up as well to to perform. I wish I was there, you know what I mean? I would have been like just going just going nuts and whatnot. And of course, you know, to those who, who showed up to the event as well too, I mean, you know, shout out as well. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean... Yeah, you know what? I've always wondered, right? In terms of all these events and, well, the, the forwarding of local hip-hop, right? Mm-hmm. What is the end game? That, that's always why I was always wonder about local hip-hop. What's, what is the end game with the artists themselves? Because I assume that you guys might have a, a deeper understanding or maybe a deeper knowledge of where these guys hoping to go. But to me, it just, it's just like a gathering to do a hobby. Okay, no, I, I, I get where you're coming from, right? Um, I, I, because, well, I, could, I mean, I, I, could, I know how much money. No, yeah, I don't know what you um think, Mike. Well, Mike, just putting out his work. I mean, that's it. It's just our body of work for it. Is. I mean, yeah. I, I don't but, know if how much who well, is yeah, expected to blow up. What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, like you, any you artist. They want to be like more international. Like that's what my hopes is now. I want these fellas to aspire to international standards because yeah. their music is that good, you know. Mike yeah. Wise, it is, yeah. That that's Mike Wise. Mike Wise has solid features already. Listen, Mike Wise has solid features already on, on his album. So, like, it's not like he thing. I mean, look, it's, it's what it is. I mean, in terms of being truly international or blowing up, he had to get a studio. I mean, it's whoever you're signed with. And that, that has nothing to do with the talent or whatever it is. It's just the back, the behind the scenes. So, I don't know. It's yeah, up to right. them. Because well, 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 that's well, my well, one thing with Trinidad music and my separation now is that we have so much talented people here that would destroy the international yeah. market. But we not we don't get them out on our forum now. That's, I mean, that's, now that's that we have... Yeah. Now, now we have BBB, we can even highlight to the world through the YouTube and whatnot that we do have this kind of talent and we do have major talents in Trinidad. Yeah, they are aware. They are aware of this. I mean, they they are fully aware of these arguments and, and of what course, it is. Yeah. Like, like, they're, yeah. they're not just doing it just because you know what I mean. But yeah, just to use this as a segue to the to the album review, right? How how I see it is that you know, um, and you know, this album actually addresses it too. You know what I mean? Like mainstream radio, there's literally a clip where a guy says mainstream radio don't give a shit about local hip hop, right? And like. Honestly, when I heard that, like, every time I listen to the track, I'll get to the track in a bit. Like, I always get so heated now, you know what I mean? Because that's, like, actually the truth, you know what I mean? So, at this point in time, the way how the internet is, and, you know, because of how COVID pretty much, you know, for better or for worse, kind of allowed people, like, you know, from various countries to interact with each other, right? Um, It's like, yeah, I could just put my talents out there, and, you know, the right people will see it. And the right people will want to invest in it and whatnot, and then we'll see how you know our careers blow up from there. But that that's how I see it right now. So it's more than oh, I just want radio to play my music and I want my music to play on local TV. It's beyond that. It's for the rest of the world to to, to be exposed to it, right? So that's why you have you know um, Spotify being free, right? And you have Bandcamp where guys like Mike Wise and them could just put their music up. You know what I mean? So that that's what it is. You know what I mean? So it's not like waiting for you know, gatekeepers who, who control the radio stations to say, yes, we're going to let you in now and you know, we're going to play your music on a, uh, 24-7. It's like, no, nah, we, we think it beyond that. So that's that's my answer to the question, right? So let's use that. Uh, let's just segue aside now. Let's let's jump into the album review here. That will be the Unusual Suspects. Um, this is the newest project from Mike Wise. I mean, I've covered his music before. He has shown up on this podcast already to talk about, you know, rap albums and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, with his last project, um, Duty Pages, which I actually had on my top five um, favorite albums of 2021. Um, my, my, you know, the, the thought that came to mind was, you know, right after, like, this is a year after he dropped Heat, Six Heat, right? Which is still, in my opinion, a yeah. masterpiece, best album yeah. of 2020, right? Barnard, right? So, you know, the question is, well, where do you go after dropping something like that? And to me, and um, similar with this project here, it's like, well, yeah, obviously the, the next step is just to reach out to other artists. Let's collaborate. Let's see what we could do. So Dirty Pages, now he collaborated with um, Raskas, um, yeah. Planet Asia, like both of which I'm yeah. like, 
how, how this even happened, you yeah. know what I mean? And also, um, Hezzy Hines, uh, MC, I didn't even hear about, um, you know, uh, up until that point, and he actually shows up here on this album here, right? But in this case here, and this is what I really, uh, uh, this is what really impresses me about um, his, uh, about Mike Weiss's catalog so far, is like his progress basically is like, all right, what what does a MC do? Like, all right, like he would collaborate with an artist, do like a full album together. Okay, I want to do that, right? So it feels logical. It feels kind of tactical what he's doing. And it's just it's not like, um, I don't know. I'm just gonna put out a whole bunch of tracks and just give it a name. And I mean, it's like, all right, here's a guy who's doing beats, some really dope beats. Let's just work with him, and you know, and that that that's 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 the plan there, right? Because and then also too, it's not like um, a lot of like local MCs do that as well, right? So not saying that he is like the first to do all these things, but still, right. it's like yeah, it's a progress kind of thing, right? So that's what I appreciate first of all about this album here, right? So um, this is a pretty short album. It runs for about uh, twenty three minutes. Um, right. It has uh, eight tracks. Yeah, uh, I, so I thought I was surprised how short it was actually. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, like, like I, I, I sense that, you know, we may get, like, a, another um, project like this, you know, with the two of them in the near future, something like a Prime that is, like, right. Royce 5.9 and DJ Premier, something right. like that, you know, right. yeah. where you kind of get the chemistry together, it's like, okay, we get we have the chemistry down, cool, let me do another one, um, another example, Randy Jules, right, LP and Killer Mike, right, so, yeah. All right, so I'm um, just doing like a track by track review quickly, well, Ricardo, I know you listened to it, so you could just share your thoughts on each track, right? right? So first off, we have Stilts, right? Um, and yeah, that's just in case you're wondering, right track d- handles the production on this entire project. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Mike Wise actually provided a beat as well too. When I get to that moment, I'll, I'll share it, right? So, right, Stilts, right? So it kicked, um, the right track basically kicks off the album on this noticeably somber beat. Uh, I'm not sure if he's actually sampling the song or if he actually remade it, right? But I gotta get a little film nudie here, but it sounds very much like a song, if, if I got the name wrong, forgive me, called Sarabande, right? This is a classical piece. If you remember, a little movie called Barry Lyndon from Stanley Kubrick is that one particular classical piece that sounds so, like, heart-wrenching and so sad, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's, 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 it's still a, a powerful song. You, you hear it ever so often in some movies, too. Uh, case in point, they play it at the end of uh, this game, a little film nudie again. Um, Lamb, remember Ricardo? You, you, we, you and I talked about it. That um, Icelandic film, Papa, Papa Boy movie, yeah, 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 the, yeah, the Papa Boy movie, right? So that song that they play in the end, that's that's the track I talk about, right? But it feels kind of like reworked because I know he he, he kind of shifted the the whole, um, you know, the, the the song itself, so it makes it sound a little bit different, right? Anyway, again, the the, the film, the shit aside, right? So. Um, and I love how he also leases the beat with like these traditional sounding drums, but it, well, I mean, like they don't sound like booba drums at all, right? Right. And he adds these ghostly vocals as well too, which gives it like this dramatic flair, right? Um, and funny enough, it actually like fits the tone that Mike Wise adapts on this. Eh? Cause he's like despondent, right? Cause he's rapping about not getting recognition he rightfully deserves in his home country, right? So in the first verse, he says, "Known to get lonely in home of petroleum, gossip, lies, slander, and broke calypsonians." And then the following bars cut even deeper. My pops taught me about Rodney Wilkes. Tread that shoot him up to promptly spit. Left yeah. a legacy many of we forgot he built. You know how this country thinks. Trini's looking down on Trini's no moco jumpy stilts. Mm-hmm. Now one light here, I had to do a little yeah. research. I had to do a little digging on Rodney and you know, I found out who he was. You know, he's yeah. a weightlifter, first Trinidadian athlete to win a, a silver medal at the Olympics right. like back in 1948, right? Um after he retired, he became an electrician yeah, in San Fernando. What, what was his name? Mighty, Mighty Majid, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And right. he died in 2014, right? Um, yeah. But the mere fact the mere fact that I didn't even know this shit, like prior to listening to the song, it's right. sad. Like, I wouldn't like that real sad that I don't even know this, right? Yeah. And it's really yeah. unfortunate, though, that, you know, like our national heroes pretty much just like swept under the rug now, you know, once yeah. they reach that, that certain peak, right? It's, it's really sad, you know? So from this point on, Mike paints his grand picture of the legacy he's currently building, right? You know, that's that's like this driving team of his music legacy, right? Um, he's talking about, he, he, he emphasizes a lot on the struggles involved, you know, he even takes a few jabs at those who kind of dismiss his music because they have curse words in them, right? right. Um, and points for the press police, press release for Pony and the genuine article, by the way. I love that line. I don't know what genuine up to, but yeah, great, great, <laughs> but other than that, this is a dope opener. It's somber, yes, but it's rightfully so, Jedi. And believe me, if you're creative, especially in Trinidad, you will feel 
and you and and and, and you, you you feel like your your, your work isn't appreciated because of the quote unquote culture. Yeah, then this song would definitely stick with you, man. So, uh, Ricardo, any quick thoughts on um, on stills? Yeah, no, yeah, it's a solid, solid opening. Uh, again, I, I was listening to this in the, in the background. I was like, wait, that's a good lyric, though. And it, yeah, when you mentioned uh, Wilkes, I was like, oh, shit, right. You actually know about that. <laughs> it's like, I, I was interested in how history take that. It's like, oh, nice one. You plug in that. That is a deep cut, David. I, like, I surprised how much people know who that is, though. I was like, yeah, I would. Yeah. But I did lyrics. Nice one. Yeah, better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so up next we have Convictions, right? Um, the, the opening vocal snippet works as a great segue from the previous track, right? Because we hear this interview. I assume it is from the lead great Lord Kitchener, right? Um, right Tracks beat has this really cold, nocturnal, kind of noise vibe to like we're just watching some kind of like grimy 80s crime film that play out, right? Right. Um, even Mike's bar song grimy as well because he's just spitting these like blunt, self affirmative lyrics, right? About the spend game, and you know, he just trained little threats to those who think they could like overpower him, right? So I love what he says fraudulent bitch ass. I'm warning you, think fast. Send shots to rappers like Nori with drink champs. I was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. I love how it ends too, where he says, Those who chase fame look at them with a high suspicion. Desires to be the best sellers came with a rise in fiction. Ah, ah, Ricardo, I know you should, you should pick up on that one. On mm. the rush to be on the scene, they sacrifice a vision. They couldn't handle the weight, give them a dietitian. So, yeah, solid track. Not much more I could see Fox with this track, right? So, yeah, any thoughts yeah. on convictions? Yeah, yeah, again, uh, uh, classic, you know, kind of brilliant uh, wood players. Like, yeah, I would, you know. Thing is, so I, I uh, first listened to this on uh, YouTube because, yeah, it just has one straight run on YouTube now. So right. I had it because I was kind of stream of consciousness as it is. But yeah, uh, yeah. I was no, like, that, that's all you should do. It's just kind of just yeah. let it run. And then afterwards, right. like I do, you just kind of dive in, like, oh, that's what you see. That's what you see. That's right, what yeah. yeah. But I didn't, I didn't like take notes on it, on it or anything like that. But yeah, I was like, yeah, just like, all right, this, 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 uh, there's a vibe though. I get a repeat, but you know, it's up there. Yeah, go ahead. Huh? Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, I, I give it a few um, to right, prepare right. for this, right? So up next, we have the first single of the album. This is the art. This is Art of War, sir, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know, just getting a little hip hop moody here now. For some reason, the opening snippet, right, is this interview we talking about art. You know, it kind of reminds me of like the opening to the track Draw Something, right, which is from the um, Evidence and Alchemist album, Lord Steppington. If you haven't listened to that, you should check it out. It's a dope-ass album. Love that album, right? But yeah, that that but in that particular track, it was just talking about, like, it was just kind of using little bits of, like, drawing terminology, you know what I mean? Just kind of mention it to kind of talk about the creative process, right? But here, he, you know, Mike just kind of goes all in, you know, and he just goes really dark because he's more or less talking about um, criminal activity, right? But Almost every bar has some kind of reference to art, right? So, case in point, he says, when them weapons is drawn, the streets painted red, bodies outlined in chalk is every day mm-hmm. dread. I ain't talking stencils, go without a trace your head. It's similar to pencils when you fill your brain with lead. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, and <laughs> it's just, at right tracks, beat is so icy and so medicine, but you know, it's almost like you're just kind of walking into some sort of like, bullet real crime scene dog you know you're just seeing bodies on the ground all kind of shit right um and the truly amazing thing about this track though is how much like art references this man packs into, yeah like a yeah. minute and 53 seconds because this song doesn't even run that long dog you know what i mean yeah but, but yeah easily one of the best tracks on this album um love this track although la- on lastly by the way it's just me or mike is a fan of like a huge fan of christopher walken dread because I can really see we how the payback track off of Duty Pages, which featured Hezzy Hines, right, which I'll get to the end, started off with a Christopher Walken movie quote. This one ends with, with another quote, right? In this right. case, I had to do some digging up. It's from Man on Fire, right? So this is what right, he says. Right. Priestley's art is dead. He's about to paint his masterpiece. So I don't know, Mike, he, he, he's a Chris Walken fan. I mean, nothing wrong with that. Is this cool? Chris Walken? No, Chris Walken? No, He does do movie references enough, enough times, you know. How about movie mm. references? He's put it thing. I mean, he's straight up had uh, that, that thing from Birdman. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, so it's like, yeah. Yeah, he movie references. It's BD. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's, it. that's it. So we, we talked about um, Art of War. Yeah, that's, that's my personal favorite track in the album. Wow. Just, 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 you know, just lines and lyrics. Again, that, that chalk outline line is like, oh, what? <laughs> that's like, all right, <laughs> yeah, hot, well hot. Yeah, good. Yeah. Up next, we have Strides, right, which is the second single. Um, right track comes through with this moody, relaxed beat. It's laced with some pleasant female vocal chops, right? 
Um, even Mike White sounds relatively relaxed here compared to the three previous tracks. Cause you know, like previously he was just like kind of pent up with all this region. Yeah, it's more like I can just kind of lay back now. He's spitting these like half braggy, half confessional bars, right? And it's all about that musical part he's on, um, the emotions associated with it, right? Mainly loneliness, right? Um, it has a pretty decent and catchy hook attached to it as well, too, right? Um, there's numerous standard bars in this. I like where he he spits um pen is fast, the way I kick it is like a back and pass. The boot houses my pain, will it ever last? Kids ask their parents, right? House of yeah. pain ever last, get it? Right. Um, anti till I meet flat line and debt. Them whack guys chucking beef let, that like to flex with music. I could I cook limbs, Dan, try your best. School shooter with good aim, class by myself. So yeah, yeah not much yeah. more I could see great yeah, track. Well. Yeah. Do, really, really dope track, man. So yeah, any thoughts on strides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, again, it, it didn't stick with me like the last track, but it, yeah, it, it just these like, oh, I wouldn't. It, I, no, I just, I just, I just, I just vibe through it and, and listen to it once. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd give it another listen. Where you're putting out these lyrics, are like, oh, I, I, I missed that way. No, nah, that, that's the beauty of of of, of hip hop, dread. Like, like you know, like mm-hmm. lines will just kind of fly past. Okay, just, yeah. just trying to dig into the tone of the of the album itself now but then like when you when you said again it's like oh oh okay okay you know and like the more you listen the more you hear you know that's how it is right yeah. so up next we have puma right so on the music video cover I forgot to mention it's a music video for strides this right. track follows afterwards right it's short it's sweet to the point it knocks it has this heezy griselda s kind of boom bap beat um oh yeah and points for the watchmen snippet that opens the track right so it's right. when so Spectre, the old one reacts to the mood of the comedian she says um what does she say well, yeah, I, I forget what it is but basically it's like her reaction to it right in case you wonder right um and the the approach the song is pretty much simple it's just right track delivers his beat and mike just pretty much delivers the smoke hence the title fuma right spanish for smoke right as in as in smoking right at the right. at the google it right a um, lot of great bars in this though but my favorite this is the one that I, that i put um when he tagged us on the video um on facebook so where he says harshest raps i expect these tunes to startle cats promise that i'm the mc you should marvel at yeah good i mean Great line. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, a dope, li- literally and figuratively dope track, yeah. man. So, yeah. any, any yeah. thoughts on Fuma? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the line that stick with me as well. I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I got it. You got it. <laughs> you got better. Yeah, I, I, I got that reference. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. I, right. I yeah. That, I got that I reference. That I understood that reference. Way. Yeah. I understood that reference. Yeah. I used that gift too, by the way. Yeah. So, up next, we have Isle, which features Lynx, the Indigo Child. Never heard of him. This is my first time hearing him, right? So, yeah. this is the first of two lyrical collabs on the album. And um, this is actually the longest track. Um, not only is this the longest track, by the way, but this is also the only track to feature Beat Switch, right? So, I'm assuming that the right, right track did the first beat and Mike Wise did the second one, right? Because you hear a Southside lifestyle watermark between tracks, right? So, I'm assuming right. that Mike did the second beat, right? Or maybe it's the other way around. Y'all could tell me, right? In the, in the comment section, right? So, first beat is like really jazzy and smooth and laid back, right? It has these sensual horns and these soulful vocal chops, right? And Mike's first in this in particular is also relatable to me in the sense that, you know, your first love. Well, in his case, you know, your first love will always be like this one thing, right? So in his case, is music, right? So his past relationships, like real relationships now, feel like, you know, just affairs now, flings, you know, because his exes just don't have the same passion for that one thing that he loves, you know what I mean? That's like me and film, you know? That's just say it, right? <laughs> but whatever. So um, great verse from him. And, you know, he has this catchy hook as well too, right? Um, links, you know, comes through with with uh, with a really yeah. solid verse as well. I really dug how smooth he flows over this beat. Just the way how he flows in this beat was amazing. Um, but that line where he says she ain't fucking with the toy once my Woody sit up, I was like, all right, right. all right, yeah. links, okay, okay, that that that's yeah. where we are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, right, but yeah, the great, great, great song, right. Um, after the beat change, now that's where you hear that that um, that vocal snippet where I said mainstream radio don't give a shit about local hip hop, right? And yeah, every time yeah. I hear that boy, again, I just get heated, boy, because that's the truth, right? And then we get this soulful string-assisted beat. It sounds lifted from some sort of like black exploitation flick, 
and Mike pretty much uses it to spit about um, his journey into the rap game, right? As you know, someone from right. Trinidad, right? Um, he makes mentions of spot rushers, right? He talks about um, Gatorians, right? If you know, you know. I actually remember the um, Gatorians. Um, I believe it was from like the mid to late nineties. I think they were they were out, you know, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, okay. He brings up Just Cheese in the basement. You know what I mean? Shout right. out to Just Cheese, by the way. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he even shouts out a few deceased rappers from from Trinidad as well too right but yeah in short this is like a fantastic tribute to like Trini hip hop Trini and easily one of the more yeah. most sorry heartfelt moments on the album man so yeah great you know um great great track as a whole so yeah any thoughts on Isle yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't pick up all the references but I didn't know it had some in, it had some uh, working intention for uh you know what are you trying to do with respect to respecting local music and local rap music in particular uh yeah so yeah but i didn't pick i didn't pick up all the references on who was and i was like oh yeah right this guy was here and this guy right okay no problem yeah go ahead yeah right 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 so um second to last track here now is occupant in my opinion the best song best instrumental on this album um right. my god this beat is a stay with your way it's so chilled out boy so laid back so soulful boy and it, you know and it, it the lot of which comes in the forms of these female vocals that appear after every fourth by the head is together 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 it just it just ha- it just stays with you. It's, it's, a, it's an instant airworm dread. It's the kind of music that you just want to listen to on a sunny night where you're just sitting back, relaxing, you're sipping on some wine and whatnot. You're just, you're just vibing, you know what I mean? Um, and pretty much here, Mike is rapping about his love for, for hip-hop, um, the fact that it's not fueled by wealth um, and short-term fame, right? But it's about the legacy, you know, many iconic MCs have cut out for themselves, right? The opening bars perfectly establish these themes. I love what he says, never switch my persona since a kid in pajama fits, built for simple living, shit fulfilling, not an interest in opulence. Kids was flipping, pistol gripping, I was wishing for prominence, with this gift of lyricism really itching for dominance. And the rest of the verse, because this is like a one one verse track, basically, it's just so brilliantly written, Jed. It'll, it'll be, really make you reconsider, as he says near the end of the song, um, your own top five list and whether he should be, you know, in it, right? And yeah, the hook is great as well, right? Especially that whole song, boys, we don't play, like, I love that, right? Kind of confrontation, but more like, yeah, I, I'm the shit, you know what I mean? So, love, 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 love this track. I don't know if this is one of your favorites, Ricardo, if it's your yeah. top favorite. It's my second favorite uh, on the on the album. Not not my favorite, but it's still it's still up there. And I, I just thought it's like yeah, it's a good way to to like just well, it was what this is the last track, right? It was closing off. Oh, second to last. Yeah. Second to last, right? Yeah, but it was like a good like you know tail end. Cool track. down. Like, mm-hmm. Cool down, right? Sorry, yeah, that, that's the perfect too. Yes, uh, for for from what we got from before, it's like yeah, man, yeah, right. And last but not least, we have weaving, which features Hezzy Hines, right? So if right track open the album on a somber note, Mike and Hezzy pretty much close it on a on a oddly existential one way. So we get this slow moving ethereal beat. Um, Mike touches on some topics reminiscent of um, Tropical Storm, which I remember was right. one of your favorite tracks off of Heat Six Eight, right? Yeah. Um, yeah basically with how we deal with our inner demons, right? But the wrong ways in how we do it and how they eventually lead to death, right? Whether it's intentional or unintentional, right? It's a really heavy subject matter, though, but Mike covers it so well in one verse, right? And his hook pretty much implies that despite the pain of life, he's not going to just go willingly into that dark night, right? To quote that poem, right? That's why he yeah. says, I ain't waving bye-bye, right? Um Heinz comes through with this um, intriguing second verse, you know. Well, this is the second time I'm, I'm actually hearing him rap alongside um, Mike, right? And usually he comes through with these really esoteric bars, right? But it's not like, um, you know, hard to understand. It's just really cryptic at times, right? Yeah. But what I really appreciated about his verse, though, was, you know, just the use of um, assonance in his verse, right? Um, like, for roughly two twos in the verse, he ends his bars with a word that resembles the sound of wise, right? So he says... He starts off with, I got a hit from Wise to take a vicious ride. And after this device, just give it time, they're going to wish I died, right? Then afterwards, he ends it with a word that resembles ethics, right? So he says, was forced to blend with the force and ethics that who lost the ethics. Throughout the course, I had to learn and also taught some lessons, right? So he's saying a lot, though, but it's just the the, the structure of his of his verses that are really, really dug to. So yeah, overall, solid closer to the album. But this is one, admittedly, that you have to listen to a number of times to pick it up. Because first, first, you know, you'll just be like, 
uh, I don't really care, but trust me, right. more or less you give it to you, you give it to the track like oh, okay, okay, I see we yeah, get right. I see we get that. But yeah. yeah, what's your what's your thoughts on weaving? Yeah, again, you're 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 right about that because I wasn't I wasn't getting it. I, was, I really should have to take the time to listen to this a second um, more times just to get what was going on. But yeah, yeah you're right. It, it is a little not yeah, cryptic, right? You, you use that yeah. term. I suppose that's the term that'll suffice. Um, but yeah. Uh yeah, but it's still a, a solid track because I just remember this like oh bump it because this is the one where the beat I was looking for the lyrics. I didn't get mm-hmm. it, so but yeah, this one I did. I did recognize that it did complement um, Tropical Storm. You mentioned, I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So um, in closing, this 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 was a this was a solid um, collaborative album. Yeah, yeah, so, a, a know, solid album overall. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. And I'm just glad that like, I'm just thinking in terms of like progress, right? Um, where Mike Weiss's career could go, right? Because you know he could just see. Because think about it, right? Like 2020, he dropped um, Heat Six Eight, right? Last year he dropped. 30 pages and now is this right so it's right. not so much like okay well every album that he drops every subsequent album was impeccable in last it's more like no this is what i want to do this is like just me kind of writing off like kind of just scratching off my, my bucket list of things that i want to do things that i've seen mcs that i look up to do before right and yeah one of those things is yeah hook up with a with an artist whether it's a rapper or producer and just do a full album so that's what he did um i don't know if we're gonna get like if you know Mike and Right Track should come, uh, we'll we'll do a follow up to this. I would actually I would actually really love if they if they do a follow up to this man, you know. But um, yeah, for what it is, this is this is a solid outing, man. So for me, I'm gonna give this a, a decent, a strong four out of five, man. This is absolutely worth checking out. Um, this is a great introduction to to Right Track, and I can't wait to hear more of his production in the near future. Um, again with Mike Wise, this is just another just notch in terms of you know just you know, just an upward trajectory, you know, I mean, in terms of where his um, career is going, man. And yeah, I just want to just see him just, you know, just do more, you know, projects of this nature. Where it's like, all right, I, you know, artists I know did this. Okay, I want to do my my take on that, right? So yeah, that that's what it is. Not so much about making classic, classic, classics. You, you know, we could always look at it and look back 10 years from now and be like, yeah, I prefer this over Heat 6 8 or whatever it is. You could make the debate afterwards, right? But right now, let like, me just lay the foundation. Let like, me just lay the, you know, the, let you just put all the projects and then years from now, we could debate which one is the best, right? But yeah, again, this is just another solid outing and I just can't wait to hear what Mike Wise brings to the next week table, man. So, um, at the moment now, it's available on his um, band camp. Um, as Ricardo right. says, it's also on YouTube if you go on his, um, you know, official YouTube channel and also it's on Spotify as well too. So, yeah, give the unusual suspects a listen, man. <laughs>